Hello, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to uh, this uh, Twitch uh, stream of uh, for Ge Geek Therapeutics. Tonight, I'm, I'm Ben Werner. I'm your Game Master. I'm going to be running uh, the game Knights of Underbed for all of you here. And uh, I think we already have everyone's characters really uh, already chosen out. So if we could go around uh, the group, um, I'm going to just kind of go in a circle what I can see on my screen. So Patrick, uh, go ahead and tell us who your character is and um, one or two fun, cool things about your character. I'm going to be uh, Bert the Bear Paladin. Okay. Um, let's see. He's uh, apparently a healer um, and has a shield skill. I'm pretty excited about. I always like being the tank. So, awesome, cool, cool. All right, up next we have Joshua. Hey, uh, I'll be playing uh, Pingui the Penguin, uh, who's a bit of a, a, a toy gadgeteer uh, repair type person, and he's always being followed by a little rubber ducky uh, who doesn't actually talk but uh, does squeak and occasionally squirts water. Awesome. Fantastic. And then uh, next we have Craig. Oh, you're muted, Craig. I am, I am Hampton. Hampton, Squeak Lord of Doom. I am a hamster in a ball, and I will roll over you. Fantastic. Um, and then next we have Paul. Oh, again, muted. So very sorry, I'm Princess Foxy. Uh, if you can uh, think of Helen Mirren from maybe Red, uh, <laughs> that uh, she's very proper, but uh, please don't cross her. Okay, awesome. And then finally we have Dylan. Ahoy, mateys, I be Captain Brickman. Well, not really, I'm Jamie Brickman, or maybe Brickman Banana. I am <laughs> made of Megos and my form changes. Fantastic. Um, all right. So tonight we're going to play uh, Knights of the Underbed, but I haven't prepared an adventure for anyone uh, because uh, one of the big uh, fun things for Knights of the Underbed is you all are going to help me create the adventure. And the way we do that is we're going to go around in, in, in a circle and we're going to share certain things that are true about this world that we're about to build together collaboratively. So um, a couple things. Um, as we go around, I'm going to ask you for one thing that is true, um, like a, a true fact about something that's in this world. And it can be, uh, there's a couple different uh, like large categories uh, that we cover. Uh, the first one being themes or threats. You know, maybe there's a storm going on outside or uh, it's Christmas time or some other major holiday. Um, the other big thing you can add is locations. Currently, we all know that all of you, um, actually, and we'll jump ahead a little bit. We also know that there are faces, which are like specific people, and then there are groups. Um, those are like the four major categories uh, that you can add something to. Um, we all know uh, that you are all uh, brave knights of the underbed for Billy the Brave, who is the child who you all protect from monsters and nightmares who uh, try to attack Billy. Um, you also know that you're located in Billy's house and Billy has a room here in this house. And we also finally know that there's a group called Knights of the Underbed, who are a, a group of uh, knights who's, of course, uh, come from the Underbed, the great city of Underbed, which is uh, a place uh, where under all beds you can travel to and there you can enter into the dreamlands. And the Dreamlands is where all monsters and nightmares come from, but also all sorts of wondrous, fantastic things like Spider-Man and uh, Superman. And uh, no, nah, I'm drawing a blank for all the wondrous things. Um, but that's where all of this comes from. So uh, I'm going to go around the group, and then we're going to come back around. So everyone's going to get to add two specific things. And after I, after you tell me the one thing, I'm going to ask you some like. Uh, kind of probing questions to like flesh it out a little bit. So um, let's see, who should we ask first? I'm gonna ask, uh, let's ask Patrick again, uh, right there at the front. 
what is something that is true about uh, our setting, our our place here in the game? Oh man, I'm on the spot. Okay, <laughs> it could be um, like uh, more family members. It could be like uh, something about Billy's uh, house or room. I have this um, idea about uh, like what happens, like the messier his room gets. Okay. Um, so like as Billy gets like as his room gets more and more cluttered or more and more disorganized, like I'm wondering how that has like an effect on the world. Um, okay. I'm drawing from like personal experience with my kids. I feel like they get more disorganized as the rooms get more disorganized. And so it's like maybe like it increases the level of chaos within the world that they live within. Okay. So when let's see. As Billy's room gets messier, so does the chaos in the world of the nights. Okay, now let me ask you this. Is Billy's yeah. room currently spotless, sort of messy, or very messy? Oh, man. It's going for me, dude. It's filthy. Uh, this place is dude. disgusting, and, like, things are just out of hand. Like, they were okay, and... What was that? They were okay, and then... They were okay, oh. and then it just, it's just gotten more and more insane okay so the once peaceful um, world that we lived in is now topsy turvy okay all righty uh joshua uh so two things uh one is that he has a uh billy has a younger sister uh who is still crawling around uh just starting to crawl uh not running yet but also means that almost all toys are always within reach um and uh the the other part is that the house itself is a two-story house and billy's Actually, room... hold on let's hold oh, let's so sorry. save save that for the next time uh when we come back to you let's talk more about the younger sister do you have a name for the younger sister uh let's go with anna okay Anna. All right, younger sister uh, is crawling. So toys within reach. And uh, what's another thing that's true about Anna? How does Billy feel about Anna? Or maybe tell me uh, how do uh, the knights feel about Anna? Um, I'll take the easy route out and say Billy, uh, Billy likes his sister. So, and like welcomes her into the room, which may have contributed to the current chaos. Um, but still just kind of, you know, rolls his eyes and like, will push some toys towards Anna to, to watch her play while right. he's doing whatever it is he's doing. Okay. But keeps her occupied, say, with, like... With Megos or other sorts of things. Yeah. Other toys. Okay. All right. Next up, we have... I keep opening the wrong thing. Okay. Um, next up, we have Craig. Uh, you want something new or something related to what's already been said? I can be totally new. Um... We have themes and threats. We have locations, faces, groups. Uh, I, I, all, all I know is that as the um, non-toy in the group, I, I am not thrilled about this younger sister and, and will avoid her like the plague because she wants to hug me and squeeze me and treat me like a plushie, and I am not. Um, I don't know if there are any other pets in the house. I haven't seen any. Um, okay. Okay. Oh, no, go on. Go on. Sorry. Pretty sure, that, pretty sure that I'm the only one. All right. Um, are you, uh, let me ask you this. Um, are you a family pet or are you Billy's pet? Billy's pet. Okay. I'm pretty sure mom doesn't like me. 
Okay, hold on real quick. Hampton, where is your uh, where is your space age uh, uh, hamster hideout? Uh, with it, all of it, your tunnels and whatnot. It is on the windowsill near uh, uh, between the bed and the closet. And it's multi-level. I can go up to the windowsill and I can go down to the floor. I'm not supposed to get out of it, but... I'm pretty sure that your hamster ball has a connection uh, to one of the tunnels so that you can go into the hamster ball and seal it and then, you know, explore this train. Uh, you know, this alien train of a messy room, probably. I'm not sure that they intended that I should be able to get into the ball <laughs> on my own, but I am, much not. More, I am much more resourceful than they give me credit for. Right. And it's between, uh, where did you say between the, the bed and the window? Bed and the closet. It bed goes closet. up to the window and down to the floor. Okay, cool. All right. So we've got a little bit more about Billy's room. Uh, Paul. Well, yes. Um, because of all the dirt, um, you see these villains called dust mites um, have invaded under the bed, and they must be dealt with. The dust mites. And uh, tell me other things that are true about the uh, the dust mites. Well, are they are they more like bugs or are they like sentient dust or are they something else? Uh, they are um, they are uh, they are sentient dust. Okay. And uh, what is it that they are trying to accomplish? Hmm. Um, well, uh, I believe, uh, they would like to, uh, uh take over this room. I, I think they would like to, uh, simply make us, uh, vanish by making us filthy and dirty, uh, making us either have to go to the washing machine or, uh, or be tossed away to the thrift store. Of course. Uh, one second. Okay. And then Dylan. I'm going to add a location in awesome. a different room. There is a large <clears throat> Linux ball tower that was uh, built by Billy and operates by moving balls down and up and in the dream world can be used to make anything. So in the real world, it just moves balls up and they go down. Wow, oh, uh, with Linux. Linux, oh, trademark. That's right. That's right. Um, this is obviously a company from, you know, Finland. Um, and, uh, okay, so it moves balls up and down. Uh, where in the house is it? I would say the basement. Okay, basement. Always a grand place to have stuff. Um, okay, so it's a large Linux ball tower, uh, moves balls up and down, but it is in the dream lens, it can create anything, and it's in the basement. Um, Tell me one other thing uh, that's in the basement besides um, the ball tower. That is also where all the board games are kept. So then uh, am I assuming, is this basement finished or is this like an unfinished basement? I like, like unfinished. It Feel, okay. feels more in line with the chaos theme. <laughs> cool, cool. All right. 
Um, all right, now uh, we're going to go back the other way uh, for stuff. So Dylan, you get to go again. All right. There is a hand-me-down toy that has been around for decades to accompany us and maybe even guide us. But it's not Billy's. It belongs to someone else. All right. What is the name of the toy and what type of toy is it? I'm going to say it's a transforming toy. It can be a vehicle or a um, animatronic man machine. Um, excuse me, I'm having too much fun with this. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> and its name should be called Robotus Primo. I'm sorry, you cut out. Was it Robotus Primo? Robotus Primo. Um, let's see real quick here. Where was that? Yes. The micro clones. Okay. And it, uh, it is a, uh, transforms between an animatronic man and a, what was the vehicle? I didn't say what in particular. Uh, let's go with the okay. truck. <laughs> okay. Uh, hand me down. Is this from a parent or an older sibling or a grandparent? I'm fine with any if someone else wants to add a character. Okay. And then... Um, One last thing. Uh, oh, you said, oh, you actually already said. Uh, okay. Very well. Okay, cool, cool. Their mentor guide to the Knights of the Empire. Fantastic. All right, now back to Paul. Um, yes, uh, I did hear something. It is the fall, but it's not quite Christmas, and there's something about a toy drive going on uh, at school uh, where they'll either take new or maybe slightly used toys. It's very concerning, though. Okay. And um, I'm guessing, is uh, has one of Billy's parents started a toy drive box by the front door uh yes yes they have and but they're leaving it up to billy to make these choices to decide which toys he'd like to give okay um i have a any... list of nominations by the way if you <laughs> care um is there uh um is, is there are there any other details you want to add about the toy drive well, it is coming up soon, um, and um, you need to make a decision soon. Yeah, a decision must be made soon. Yes. Okay, so this is our Chekhov toy drive. It is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Craig. I don't want to alarm you. But I've been in the basement, and there are mice and rats in the basement. Oh, no. And quite frankly, they're jerks. Well, uh, the mice and rats that live in the basement, um, are they organized? Are they like an outfit? Um, or are they just like, you know... Uh, multiple warring clans of mice and rats. The mice are together. They're okay. a family. Because you know how mice are. Right. Rat. The rat is all by itself. And the mice are afraid of the rat. I am okay. not afraid of the rat. Not really. Can't prove it. Uh, 
Um, is there a specific place where the mice and or rat uh, live in the basement? Are they in the board games or are they... Um... they? They live in the walls and and the sewer grate in the back room by the by the laundry detergent. Yes. The games are delightful. <laughs> There's a lot of pieces in paper that need chewing. Very much so. It's like a, uh, a charcuterie board uh, or a smorgasbord. Yes, of, of paper. All right. Is there anything else you want to add about the jerk rat or the mice family? No, no. I, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with them because I'm in my ball. That's don't, right. Yeah, don't, totally. Don't, don't take me out of They're my not ball. a threat. Totally. Don't take, don't take me out of my ball. That's right. Not downstairs. Uh, yeah. All right, Joshua. All right. Uh, so Billy and Anna's mother, Camille, is uh, is a very busy woman, but she tries to keep everything clean. Um, but she also wants to give kids, uh, her children, creative space. So while Billy's room getting chaotic getting dirty uh isn't something that she likes she encourages him to clean his room on his own and doesn't like necessarily want to come in the truth is that she's a tired mother you know who works during the day and uh is managing is taking care of the rest of the house as well so on his own is camille c-a-m-i-l-e uh c-a-m-i-l-l-e Okay. I guess it encourages matter. Billy to clean his room on his own. Uh, uh, tired, overworked mom. Also has a toddler. So, yep. yeah. Um, is Robotus Primo Camille's? Yes. Okay. Yep. Camille got it as part of, you know, the, the running trend of creative toys and different things. She, she received it. Uh, she got uh, Robotus Primo uh, whenever the cartoons were first, you know, the cartoons were first airing and she got the Robotus Primo because it was, you know, a nifty toy that encouraged uh, play and creativity. It was that it toy. In it was, it was. 1987, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all remember it. I got it because my dad was the manager of a jewelry store next door to uh, a KB toy store. And it, he was friends with the manager and like no one got it. The crazy thing is, is we didn't have a TV. And the only way I would like see any cartoons was at my grandparents, like half an hour a day. And so I didn't even watch it. And I had no idea what it was. <laughs> and all my friends were like super jealous. I'm like, okay. Ended up giving it to my friend Ricky like a year later. But yeah, uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, all right, so uh, Robotus Primo uh, was Camille's. Um, awesome. And uh, is there anything else you want to add about uh, Camille? Uh, if Billy doesn't start to put toys in the toy box, Camille's probably going to start volunteering toys. Okay. Very Hampton well. is not a toy. True. I mean, you know, schools always do need more pets, though. You've heard that before, right? Like third grade classrooms having their own pet pythons. Why? Why? Why does Hemi the hamster have a, a brown dot instead of a, a black one this week? <laughs> All right. Um, finally, back to Patrick. All right. Okay. So, <clears throat> since uh, the underbed is a portal to uh, Dreamland, 
Mm-hmm. Um, there, there can be one... multiple portals, okay. by the way. We so, also have I'm... the portal with the the um, the ball tower. Sorry, but go okay. ahead. Oh, I got to write that down. Hold on. Got to get this lore down. All right, so there's multiple portals. So we have the one under the bed, and we have the ball tower. Um, I'm thinking of what people in Billy's world function sort of as like elder gods and how we might be able to contact them and okay. what the effects would be on our world of motivating in some way um, like Camille. You know, is she a god to them, right? Like Billy's a god to them. Like Camille is like an elder god. And maybe um, Robotus Primo is like Camille's avatar in their world. Um, and so we have this whole like, uh, yeah, like, hierarchy of the deities within their okay. their world. I, I need to put this down under themes really quickly. Hold okay. on. Uh, <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, Okay, so Camille is like an elder god to the knights. Billy is the knight's god. Primo is Camille's avatar. Um, what else did you want to add? If Or is there something I missed? I don't know. You got to stop me at some point. But um, let me think. I had a part of an idea for me about this. Um, yeah, and that... Uh, let's see. So uh, Bert's a paladin, um, but a paladin of... Ooh. um so billy. i guess he's, he's kind of working yeah okay of billy got it yeah i'll stop there okay i'm, I'm afraid to go further <laughs> no worries uh okay so it is uh 30 minutes into our stream right now i'm gonna take five ten minutes to look at all this amazing stuff you gave me. And I'm going to come up with an adventure for all of us. And uh, during that time, I'd like it if, uh, if you, all of you need to take bio breaks, get water, snacks, whatever, um, and come back and uh, we'll be ready to play as soon as um, I'm ready. So let's say um, at uh, like, it's gonna be 30, uh, it'll be 41. So you're, it's 631 my time. So 641, or so let's say 642, uh, my time, or whatever your time is. All right, be right back. 10 minutes, everyone. This reminds me a lot of the Stuffed Fables game. I don't know when that came out. I think it came out, I think maybe around the same time as my game did. I oh, this is your game. Did. What? This is your game. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my name. Uh, this uh, we did the Kickstarter in 2017, but the 2019 is when this finally got printed because of life and uh, <laughs> all that stuff. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I think Stuff Fables came out like right before my Kickstarter happened, and I had never heard of it at all. <laughs> Also, there's like a board game, I guess that there's that's like similar to this. Um, that is like also something I hadn't heard of. So, it's there's definitely this like genre of like toys coming to life sort of thing that exists out there that like kind of in the zeitgeist. The thing that actually uh, uh, inspired me was not just telling stories to my kids and Toy Story, uh, but also there was this like sepia toned black and white uh, image of this little kid sleeping on their bed and this teddy bear with a wooden sword pointing the sword up at this giant horrific looking monster that's like reaching over the bed towards the kid. And I'm almost certain, like anytime I describe it, like at least half the people that I'm talking to are like, oh yes, I've seen that, right? Like that, like right there, I was like, this needs to be a role-playing game. And my friend John was like, well, you better write it. And I was like, gosh, dang it. Okay. And so I did. 
<laughs> um, yours, is, yours is more of a role playing game. The stuff fables is more of a. I mean, it's kind of role playing, but it's really designed for kids, and it's it's a a map book game. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So that's that's what I was like. Yeah, the the role like it's more of a half. It's a hybrid between like a role playing and board game. Yeah, with a lot yeah. more dice and things involved. Yours is a simpler yeah. system. Yeah, yeah. I I definitely wanted it to be a simple system. I wanted kids who uh, are like early <laughs> readers, and maybe even a couple kids who are pre reading, if they had like a parent with them, could play this game. I want it to be pretty straightforward um, to focus on the story. There's also another one where it's an older version where you actually play with real stuffed animals and give them stats and they battle each other and things like that. Well, that's I don't remember what that one's called, but I've played it. One of the things I did in playtest was I told people show up with your with your toy or your plush and mm -hmm. we'll make your character. And we did that a whole bunch. Lots of times. I've had a BB-8. Uh, we created BB-8 in a game once and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, all right. Uh, I'm almost done here. Sorry, I distracted you. The worst. It's okay. Uh, Penge, do you have a penguin in your background now? I, this is actually the artwork from the book. Uh, from the Kickstarter. So I I switched it. Uh, you can't see it on stream because it's cropped down. Uh, but uh, yes, it is the artwork from the Kickstarter uh, of of the troop of toys that we are uh, playing as fighting versus a shadow. Yeah, there Very it is. Very impressive. Very impressive. It's uh yeah, it's part of the troop, right? Like I like not Hampton and and Brickman um aren't in the art for that because uh they were uh, they were going to be expansions that um because actually insider note uh this started as a card and dice game um where you it was a it's a co-op i'm actually gonna probably next year when things are calm and i'm not doing my masters or i'm not in the intensive for my masters i'm gonna put the card and dice game out basically you choose a kid and uh a knight and you combine them, and each one has a different power that you get. And then there's the deck of monsters, and then there's a house, which is like uh, their cards as well. And you have to keep the monsters out of the kid's bedroom. And you roll dice and match them to the monster cards, and that's how you defeat the monsters. And then the nightmare is the last card, and if you can defeat the nightmare, you win the game. So, yeah. Uh, all right. So, I have... Uh, see okay all right i'm ready um is everyone ready we good yep okay it is a dark and stormy night uh the day has been long and chaotic uh toys and clothes and food wrappers and plates and all sorts of things that don't shouldn't be you know, on the floor of a kid's room, scatter or scattered about Billy's room on shelves. Um, there's like cleats and dirty socks uh, that stink up, you know, one corner. And there's like a wet, moldy, uh, mildewy jacket in another corner. Uh, the lightning crashes outside and uh, Hampton's Space Age uh, uh, Fortress of Solitude uh, shines on its plastic edges. Um, and you see the tower um, up above where Hampton can climb up and look about the bedroom. Um, and you, the plastic all the way down to the floor as well, the tunneling. And uh, the uh, four of you who aren't uh, in Hampton's Fortress of Solitude, uh, where are you in the room right now while Billy sleeps soundly uh, in the early hours of the night? Pingy is walking around the room, trying to find amongst all the clutter and the chaos, uh, what are parts and bits that he can pick up and add to his collection uh, to help, one, help himself 
build things that will make situations better, but then to kind of help Billy clean up this mess because it's even for even for Pingy, it's getting to be a, a little little much. A little much. Okay. Yeah, you're you're searching through the detritus, uh, detritus, and there's like you know little things. Oh, here's a uh, a, uh, a Roosevelt log that you could put in your backpack. You know, it's got those little cutouts that you could probably use for something fun, maybe like a a pole or something, and you know, just different things like that. Um, uh, let's see, Foxy and Brickman and uh, Bert, where are all of you? Uh, I am patrolling, walking back and forth throughout under the bed and so forth, just keeping my eyes open, wondering okay. what foul things might be afoot. Well, there's definitely a foul sock. Um, no feet in it, though, but it is a foul sock right there uh, hanging off the bed. It's one of those long soccer socks. The bottom half is now stiff uh, from the amount of sweat from the kid wearing the... Uh, from- Billy wearing the sock, you know, three or four times at the soccer practice. Oh, and, I poke it with my space gun. Ugh. And and the like the smell of sweat and like, you know, Cheeto oh. foot uh just you know like waves over you. It does not go well with your uh your eau de parfum that ew, you know cor- yeah. No. Uh Brickman. Well, Jamie is digging through the small container of Megos to see if he can come up with any new outfits for himself. But unfortunately, he's not really as creative as Billy is, so he's he's having a rough time with this. Yeah, there's like there's like five of those black and white, like uh, space trooper, like outfits that you're just like, oh, not another one. You yeah, know, that you've gone through. That. Yeah, an evil trooper. evil space lord. That's you know <laughs> that's lame and yeah, so many of those. You know, and then there's like wizard school outfits, and you're just like, ah, eh, maybe I don't know. You got just um, like small pieces, random pieces, and little one yeah. foot brick ones. What do you even do with those? There's like a little cheese wedge, you know, piece. Yeah, and you're like, I can put that. it on my hat, my head, but then I'd just be like a sports fan, you know. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, you're digging through the, uh, you're digging through the smaller box, which is just like mini fig type stuff or uh, Brickman type stuff, mm. and uh, the large box of Megos is just beyond there and it's open and it's like kind of spilling over almost like a sand dune of megos of uh, like this multicolored rainbow of yeah um and then uh bert where are you yeah. Bert is uh folded in half uh and being used as a pillow at the moment uh, uh yes. because god knows where billy's actual pillow is uh right. in this mess i'm trying to extract myself um i'm my my head is like folded up on my back and my little legs are just trying to walk out from mutter i'm just slowly (laughs) undoing myself uh well uh foxy noticed the pillow uh like it's down between the nightstand the nightstand and the like the bed it's like slid off and down there like the start of your patrol you're like oh hello this is right here um, and, uh, uh, Bert, uh, give me a, uh, give me a test to see if you can, uh, get out easily here. Uh, um, I would love to. let's see. I have any, yeah, just, uh, me. you don't have any traits specifically. I don't think. No. It's okay. So two. 2d6. I have a five. A Fantastic. All right, so you uh, pull the five is a success. So uh, after a few moments, uh, you feel uh, uh, Billy's head just like slowly slide off of you and you pop free and you stand up um, and uh, you see your uh, shield and uh, sword uh, over by the, uh, on the nightstand there. And you can see that the, in the between that there's the top of the pillow there. Um, if you wanted to like pull that up as well, um, and uh, Foxy, give me a uh, uh, give me a uh, a test uh, like a perception test. So that's just going to be a straight up two d six for you. 
a six and a four. All right, cool. Um, also, actually, uh, I'm sorry. Also, at the same time, Hampton, give me a perception check. I don't know if you have anything for that either. It's probably going to just be a two. Yeah, it's just going to be 2d6 as well. Okay. All right. Uh, so you are busy um, looking out, surveying across uh, the vast uh, chaotic landscape of this room, um, the hills and valleys of dirty laundry and, and, and toys lie, lying about. Um, and uh, Jamie, you are deep in the, the Migo container. Penguin, you're, you're out patrolling amongst the, the craziness. And uh, Foxy, uh, you are just finishing your first rotation around uh, the under, just like the right under the edge of the bed, and uh, you hear the shuffling sounds of dust mites. And uh, you look underneath the bed, and normally that's a way you would walk through to get to the dreamlands and to the great city of Underbed, where all knights of the Underbed. Uh, who have retired go to reside where the great citadel of the Knights of the Underbed is and the goblin markets and all the great wonders of the city of Underbed. But it also can be a passage to anywhere in the dreamlands. And as you look, you see uh, the telltale tumble uh, dust uh, ball roll past you and little red eyes start to glow in the dark and they just proliferate. And everyone roll me initiative. And then go ahead and put it in chat. I forget what is initiative. Oh, that's great. Uh, it is uh, 2d6 and then just add them together. Okay, uh, Bert. I have a, as uh, Hampton has vigilance. So do I roll three dice six for that, or is that just the trait that comes in at certain times? Oh no, you roll three dice for that one. Okie dokie. Okay, so. Okay. Then that's an eleven. All right. I have some questions. Sure. I'll answer in just a second. Let me get these uh, sorted out real quick here. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Where was it? This Hampton is a patient hamster. <laughs> Good. Uh, then, and then we have uh, Bert and Brickman, who both had an eight. Who wants to go next? You can work it out between the two of you. You're both on mute, too. I think, I think I'm more occupied with my okay. current project. All right. I'll go. All right. Eight. So Penguin is a four and uh, Foxy is a five. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, so what was your question real quick? So uh, in my uh, solitude, Fortress of Solitude, is Billy responsible for cleaning out my shavings or is that a, a mom thing? Well, since mom kind of gave Billy the job of taking care of Billy's room, it would definitely be a Billy thing. So the chaos uh, outside matches the chaos inside? 
if you're a fastidious uh, hamster, it may be that you've organized it better than anything that Billy no, has done. No, no, I'm not. However, it does mean okay. that I need to go out and communicate with Billy that it's time to clean out my 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 solitude. Yeah, of course. Okay. For, unfortunately, Billy's deep deep in uh, sleep right now. Yes, but that's the best time to communicate. I go out and I find something important and chew it into little bits. Oh, okay. I see. Yes. So I will move towards my hamster ball. Okay. Um, in fact, uh, when you uh, start moving down towards your hamster ball, Foxy, uh, because you noticed on your uh, perception check right before initiative starts, uh, you get to uh, act if you want. You get one action. You can either rush towards them. You can also, as a free action, call out um, if you want. Uh, I or, would have a system for this, and I believe I have a flashlight under there that I would jump up and down on multiple times, which is the dust mite warning system. Okay, of course, yes. So, um, all right, fantastic. So, uh, Hampton, as you were uh, climbing down uh, your your tunnel uh, down towards the launch bay for the, the ball of doom, uh, you see the light flashing uh, from under the bed, you know, the dust, the dust mite warning system, exactly. Um, so, uh, you quickly climb into your ball, you seal the hatch, you turn it real quick, and it's now your turn to act. Uh, you have two actions. You can, uh, where did I put my thing? Oh, here we go. You can attack, you can move, you can evade, and you can focus. And right. you can do any of those, uh, twice or any combination of those. So, my first action is going to be to move. Okay. Get the ball rolling. Okay. Towards the underside of the bed at least the border of the underside of the bed yep. to see what i can see all right um because your hamster ball of doom is so awesome and it takes two traits uh, one of the things that you get to move 45 inches in a round instead of the standard uh, other things although it cannot climb things so yeah. uh you get in the ball and you start booking it and you run right up to the edge of the the bed um and uh the hamster ball goes tick or clink as the bottom of the bed frame and the hamster ball kind of run into each other. So, so you're, you know, you're, you're slightly, you know, it's like no vehicles over this high into this area. So you hit the edge and uh, you see all these uh, dust mites. Fortunately, you don't have to like, you know, like try to get out and get under the bed because the dust mites are rolling out from under the bed, this wave of uh, barbarian dust mites, if you will. Okay. Can I add, are they out far enough where I can make an attack on them, or do I need to taunt yeah. them out? No, they're coming out. Okay. All their red eyes and their, I will their piles roll, of dust. I will roll over them. Okay. Uh, give me uh, an attack roll. Okay. Do you uh, want to use your hamster ball of doom, I'm assuming? I, of course. Okay, uh, so you roll 2d6. Yep. 2d6, standard roll... I rolled a two and a five. Okay, fantastic. Uh, you smash down, uh, because you do two points of damage with your hamster ball, you smash down two uh, of the dust mite horde that is rolling forth. Uh, to arms, to arms, dust mites. Fantastic. And then, the dust, and then the dust, the dust mites go. Um, and, uh, Foxy, a swarm of small dust mites, uh, come towards you and, uh, they all swing at you, uh, but they're, they're small and ineffective and dusty. And the, the most that they do is they cover you in some dust, um, and don't actually, uh, do any damage to you, but they're fierce chittering, uh, of their like their little dusty voice and their little red eyes pierce you and chill you to the bone. Uh, Hampton, um, another set of uh, uh, dust mites uh, try to attack you, and one squeezes through the sh through the air holes in your ball, gets inside, and uh, shoots itself. It, like it squeezes through, and you look up at it and you go ah, and it shoots down your throat. And it makes you cough. 
uh, and cough up dust and uh, and just the worst dry mouth ever. And so you take one point of damage. No. F uh, now, does that that foregoes the three points of armor that I have from my dust, my yes. ball of doom? It does. It because they're attacking. Well, that's just not right. I know it's <laughs> terrible. They're dust. They can get everywhere. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Um, and then uh, where, where was that? Ah, uh, Bert. You see down below you on the ground this like puff of of gray spreading out under from out from under the bed as it rolls over like Hampton rolls over some of it and then just this wave of of dust rolls over top of Hampton's ball and you think you hear Foxy down there too you definitely saw the light going off did I miss my opportunity to shout to get out of his air hole <laughs> You can shout that. Can I do that as a free act? Okay. Yes, yes. I shout that. Get out of his air holes. And uh, can I, can I uh, fall without injury? Uh, you can. Uh, that would be like a move action. Okay. So, yeah. I would, uh, yeah, make that as a move action. So I just like that, tip off the edge of the bed. Yeah, or just step off it if you want. Yeah. No, I want to fall like just like clumsily. Okay, that's totally cool. I don't want to land with like a sound Oof. yeah yeah uh yeah and then uh, dust mites. exactly so what's your uh next action uh now that i've landed um mm -hmm. i let's see can i declare a smite or is that a, that's an action by itself yeah it's one of your parts of your palette and things so it's yeah, a smite so action for that. so it's like an okay. improved damage sort of thing right right i'm gonna go and get after these things a bit, I think. Okay. Um, let's see. Hold on. So, uh, Hampton, are you injured? Are you taking damage? Uh, <coughs> Damage? A little bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to use my healer action. Okay. Uh, to aid my comrade. How do you get to me? I'm in my ball of doom. Hmm. Good question. Is it magical healing? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. So you're like the only one that can actually it. heal Hampton. Gotcha. So, yeah. So you can roll 2d6 and just put your hand up against the ball and magically heal Hampton if you need to. Okay. I'm going to magic. I'm going to try magically All right. heal Hampton. I got a six. Fantastic. Uh, I put my hand against the clear ball and close my eyes and the little twinkle in my black eyes emerges. <laughs> and I siphon out the dust mites. Yeah. And Hampton, you are, are healed now. You're no longer hurt. Sweet. This is all happening on the left-hand side of the bed. Thanks, Bert. Uh, like between the window and the bed area. Um, and, uh, up next is, uh, Jamie, you heard all the commotion and you stick your head up out of the, uh, the, uh, Migos, uh, Brickman box and you see right, like, you know, there was behind you. Now you're looking back towards the bed right there. There's, uh, Bert and Hampton and Foxy all fighting this, uh, wave of, of dust mite invasion oh no this is terrible and certainly no place for jamie brickman so jamie runs and by that i mean i transform into captain brickman Ahoy! the best shooting shot in the world and thinking quickly i'm going to try to improvise a firearm from a megaphone and one of those little cat pieces <laughs> it's fantastic uh it's right there so go ahead and roll 3d6 all uh, right I rolled a six and two threes. Fantastic. So you hit with the six, um, and the little piece flies across the room. We, we pan out to this room, um, and it's raining outside, and there's this child sleeping on their bed, and there's this little puff of dust that comes out from under the bed uh, while the, the hamster's moving about, and there's these two stuffed animals. And you see this tiny little minifig running across 
uh, the ground and then this little peg, this little red peg flies off and like hits some of the dust mites and some of them just disappear. <laughs> and then we zoom back into the action and the music swells again, uh, loud. And, <laughs> um, and that goes to Foxy. Um, let's see, I'm going to, um, hmm. Uh, I'm going to try to use my uh, my space gun. Fantastic. That's right, because you are a space princess. I am a right? space princess. Yep, you're space fox princess. That's right. Yep. Billy's pretty creative for being the brave kid. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I guess that would be 2d6. Mm -hmm. Actually, you are... Uh, I think that's your... Oh, no, yeah, it's 2d6. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Nope, I got two twos. Okay. You fire your your space uh your space blaster and the uh uh the dust mites are just too fast for you to get out of the way. They're just choo, 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 choo. Pew, pew, um, pew. pew pew pew. Pew pew pew. Pew pew. Um and then Pengui, uh you're you know a little bit ways away as well. You were kind of near where uh Jamie was when mm -hmm. all this happened and you turn around still holding your your roosevelt log and uh or maybe you've just put it in your pack and uh you see ahead of you this commotion i uh i have this roosevelt log and i look forward and uh i see jamie just take off past me and i look down at the at winston and i go <laughs> winston to arms and uh and winston will shoot a water squirt uh like squirt water out at some of the dust that's coming out and then i'm going to go in and like kind of unwieldy like not really that great at it but i'm going to try to like start knocking some of the dust around uh so yay winston <laughs> winston bounces forward and then shoot uh sprays dust uh, uh does not hit uh oh. so he he sprays some dust or he sprays water around and and you know starts to get the floor wet and stuff and I start to swing the uh swing the log around trying to knock things in. Uh am I close enough that I need to use a do I need to use a movement to get up to them or are they far enough yeah. out? Okay. Yeah. Then I'll I'll move in and then start to try to knock them in. I'm actually gonna try to knock them into the water. Um a four will not do it though. No. All so, righty. But you and Winston are like trying to like you know corral the things and uh, all right. Uh, so the the attack has just begun. Hampton, you're feeling better. It's back up to you. Uh, there are still dust mites around me. Mm -hmm. Oh okay. yes, a big horde. I am going to attack and evade. Okay. By evade. What I'm going, what my evade looks like, I don't care if they hit the ball, but I am going to try and spread out my legs when I'm not rolling the ball to cover the air holes. Ah, good. Yeah, that's a very important thing. So that's my evading. Um, okay. But I, will make, I will make a standard attack on uh, the nearest one and see if I can roll over it. Okay. And I rolled a four and a two. Apparently, okay. trying to cover the air holes and rolling the ball is difficult. Very difficult. Um, and then, uh, and then you're evading for your other. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So go ahead and give me a roll of a one d six. Okay. Oh, actually, no. Never mind. Not right now. Okay. Oh, wait. Yes. Yes. Actually, it is right now because it's the the mites. So they are, uh, yes. I, I rolled a I, six. Okay, fantastic. The mites uh, try to like sneak into the air holes, but you're covering them up and you're pushing them out, so they can't. They whack a mole. Can't get Only it's a game called whack a mite. That's right. Um, okay, and then we have. Um, let's see. Oh, and then they are going to one, two, three, four, five. Uh, Penguin. Uh, they are attacking you. Oh, and they definitely hit you. Um, so you are covered in dust. Um, and it looks like they're like burrowing in to uh, like they're burrowing in between your seams, and, like trying to like pull your seams apart. So you take a point of damage and you're just now dusty as heck. 
No. Yeah. All right. Um, and up next is Bert. Yeah. Who's near me? I don't. I've got Hampton. Everyone is is Everyone's nearby now. Close to yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, is everyone considered adjacent to me? Um, I think uh, Hampton is probably still rolling around near you. I would say Foxy's adjacent. I don't. I. I don't think uh, Brickman or Penguin are quite adjacent with you. They're a little right. farther on the other. They're near the the end. The, they're near the foot of the bed. You're closer, to like the middle of the bed. They were using ranged yeah. weapons. Exactly. Gotcha. Um, well, I will go ahead and do my best to protect my allies that are near me. Um, and I'm going to use my second evade action, which allows me to grant benefits to my nearby or my adjacent allies. So okay, I'm going to try to protect Hampton. Uh, okay. And let's see. When I do okay. evade, I do it with 2d6. Right. right, so what happens is is uh, until the beginning of your turn, um, mm -hmm. any attacks, which will be the next round of, of dust mite attacks, uh, anyone that's adjacent to you that gets attacked by the dust mites, uh, like Hampton and Foxy, will get to roll 2d6 instead of 1d6. Okay. Because you're also um, protecting them with your shield. Right. No, okay. Ready. And then what's your other action that you want to do? Do I... Is that so? It's it's a two out of two on my sheet. Oh, is that, does that mean? Does that say what it for my my second paladin action? Um, when I take the evade action. Oh no, that's it's just saying that that's the it's second just half. The second one. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Thanks, boss. It's okay. just the second. Yeah. It's the second uh, half of that ability. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, I do that. Um, I have a five and a one, so my five wins. And I can also attack from my position. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to try to knock some of these mites off of my bud Hampton here. Okay. So he can breathe through his air holes and stuff. All right. Six and a one. one okay, so two. the six works. So uh, you yeah. just scrape the mites off of uh, the... Uh, Hampton's ball, and now it's uncovered now from the dust. Uh, and so that would be Jamie. All right. I'm going to run up to Penguiny if I'm not already near him. Okay. Um, and then can I focus Penguiny by giving him some fencing tips? Um, yeah, that's totally fine. You can right, totally perfect. help someone someone else uh, succeed at their test. That's Angry! Focus on your footwork. <clears throat> and don't overswing. <laughs> That's so fantastic. So, uh, Penguin, uh, your next uh, attack test, or your next skill test will succeed at a 4, 5, or 6. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Foxy. Uh, yes, I'm going to, uh, let's see. So I am adjacent to Bert behind his shield currently. Is that right? Yeah. Um, but I see, I'm going to shoot over and see if I can't get some of those, uh, dust mites off of Penguin, uh, if he is in range and, uh, and I can see him and so forth. Sure. Yeah. Also, when, when am I, uh, I guess this comes with, but, um, uh, I'm proficient with my gun, but there's a, it says mastered weapon. Does that come with experience? Uh, that when I have a mastered weapon, yeah, okay, yeah. all right, then I will try to shoot some of these mites off of Penguin. Oh no, <laughs> double ones. <laughs> Fortunately, oh, there's no. no critical failures. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's good, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, no. but uh, not in this game. There are in like Tiny Cthulhu and other tiny games, but uh, th yeah, this one you're fi you're totally fine. It goes flying off and it's clear, um, or it, it, it shoots, but like the, the dust mites get out of the way, right? Um, Foxy, yeah. Foxy's a stormtrooper, that's right. <laughs> <It's> clearly, <laughs> clearly, I am. Yeah, you, you, you learned how to shoot from those start space <laughs> right. troopers. Yeah. Um, and uh, so they're, they're like dodging out of the way. They're dust. It's like what they do. It's pretty terrible and annoying. 
Um, and then finally, uh, yeah, and, and you were, so that was your first attack, first action. What was your second action? Um, you, is, if you want to, you can attack again. Okay, well, I would like to attack again. See if I can't sure, go ahead. change this up. Two fours. Okay. Yeah, you're just shooting wildly all over the place. Just, you know, you know, the music swelling behind all of you. Um, and the Penguin, it's now your turn. Okay. Um, is it an action to look for? So I'm looking for uh, an overturned glass or a bowl, something to like shove the dust mites into that we could then like trap them. Uh, yeah, there's a, uh, there's a glass, uh, there's a, like a long, uh, like a tall glass, like a clear glass. It's like laying on the floor with like a slight residue, um, of uh like water in the bottom or kool-aid slight okay. residue of kool-aid <laughs> in the bottom and the fact that there's a glass glass on the floor like if if billy's mom saw that right like this and like it, you see that it's like fallen off like one of the tables in, in billy's room and there's actually a, a, cr a crumb covered like small plate from like you know uh lunch yesterday or something that's still sitting, it's like kind of teetering on the table up above. But yeah, on its side, long glass. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to look over at Jamie. I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to start like two hand, like kind of pseudo fencing carefully, uh, but really just as much trying to corral the dust mites towards the glass. Sure. Uh, and that will be a six. And Fantastic. then, and then yeah. I will go ahead and attack again. Uh, so sure. double action the attack um, with a three. So that one will okay. miss. That's fine though, because the remaining dust mites, you get them all into the glass with your first attack. Um, and if you, uh, yeah, and so you're kind of like keeping them there, and they're all like uh, growling at you from the bottom of the glass, and they're turning slightly pinkish as the, the remaining <laughs> Kool Aid seeps into them. Um, and, and in that moment, uh, you hear something, it's so loud, like Billy's asleep, and you hear this uh, noise that says, uh, Microclones, transform! And you see this like glowing lights from the other side of the bed, like play across the ceiling, and you hear, like just really loud, like loud enough um, that you hear footsteps coming down the hall and, uh, you, uh, you just all kind of freeze for a moment and the door opens and light spills down into the room and Camille sticks her head in and says, Billy. And then she looks and sees if he's asleep and she's like, oh, these toys. Oh my, oh, oh. And she like looks around the room and like, she sees the glass and like steps over all of you, picks up the glass and the plate and like just, oh. and then you hear uh, Anna in the other like room, like make a noise. And like, this is, Billy's been asleep for a couple hours and Anna is awake. You just like, you know, and so she turns around and rushes out the room and closes the door. And uh, you still hear like, like the, the, sound, the mechanical sound, but it's much quieter now. And it's on the other side of the bed. And then uh, you hear um, the roar, the, the deep guttural roar of a dust bunny also on the other side of the bed. So uh, uh, you're out of combat now because the dust bunnies on the side of the bed have been defeated. And if you want to, you can like rush to the other side to see what's going on. It, is this the sound of my mentor and hero, uh, Robotus Primo? It oh, is well, of course out I'm of Robotus Primo. As fast as I can. I won't even take the time to change my more fancy outfit. Exactly. Uh, you make it around the corner first, uh, Jamie, and everyone like piles in behind you, and you see Robotus Primo uh, hanging in the air as a giant dust bunny holds Robotus Primo in its its jaws. This just giant like tumbleweed of of dust and carnage and uh terrible glowing red eyes 
and uh, there's like tiny little dust mites like cheering around it. And Robotus Primo looks at all of you as he corrodes and like starts like his batteries wearing down and you can see the uh, the battery acid like come out of his chest plate that is screwed shut. And he looks at uh, all of you and says, get the eternity particle. You must save me. And he stop, like, just stops. And he is now dusty and covered in, in like rust. Like he's been like left out in the rain or something. Like he was immaculate looking just like seconds ago. And then the like, and as the dust uh, bunny just like soups into him and like, yeah, it disappears inside of Robotus Primo. And the other little dust mites, ah! and then they drag him off uh, under the bed. No. I assume that I cannot get there before that happens. No. Yeah, it, that happens as you're like coming around the corner. That's like this whole like, you know, he he rusts and does this, and then the little dust mites run off. I think I said that he they drag him under the bed, but they don't. They kind of like drag him over and then like drop him, and then Hampton the will try disappear. and slam up beside the bed. Yeah, of course, she's like ah. Yeah. Ingy immediately runs over, tosses the log into his backpack, and pulls out the screwdriver to go see if he can do any repairs on uh on Robotus Primo. Primo. Robotus yeah. Primo. Okay. Uh so Robotus Primo has seen better days. Um you uh uh note that Robotus Primo is broken. Um, but he's also corroded. So uh, you use the, I'm not even going to make you roll. You use the screwdriver. The little rusted uh, screw comes out. His chest plate pops open. And inside is the great uh, eternal particle. And it is just foamed over with acid. Uh, this big thing. And it has the, the giant letter uh, uh, E on the side of it for eternal particle, of course. Um, and, uh, it's just like corroded there and he's just like, you know, staring out ahead of him and frozen in a sort of rigor mortis of, of, yeah. you know, seized gears. You, you can bring I, him back, right, Pingy? I, I, I need another and like, I, I need the other eternal particle to, to bring him back. Uh, do I know offhand where I can get one. Um, or do I think you, I need to go to the basement to the the device downstairs? I know where we can get one. The device downstairs, the uh, um, the large Linux ball tower would definitely, if you were able to get to the Dreamlands, use that to create a new Eternity particle. Uh, Foxy is knowledgeable. I, I believe I'm educated, so I know. Yes, things. educated. So uh, they know something. So, uh, so Foxy might know, might have a better, like, might have an idea. Um, Would Hampton know from running around the house? Possibly, I, I, yeah. I, I know that there's a toy that, that runs on that thing in the box. So Here's go the ahead. The ones uh, are the little ones. Is it three little ones or two big ones? Yeah, this is one really big one. It's an oh. E oh, for no. eternal particle. I mean, the other thing is, it might just be his time. Maybe we should just take him and throw him in the box. Don't say that. Don't say that. He was always there for us. How dare you? Listen, better him than us. You know that the toy drive is coming up, and that box should be full. I can't well, believe what I'm hearing. Let me let me see what I can do before we we jump to that that conclusion. I'm I I think. I think this should be easy enough with the right thing. I I think I'll, I can do this. I'll exit my ball and look for something to gnaw on. Uh, there's plenty of stuff to gnaw on. There's lots and lots of Roosevelt logs. It needs uh, to be something that I can make a real mess with because that's the only way to communicate with Billy that it's time to clean the room in my cage. Are these, uh, are these Rose, 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 what did you call them, Roosevelt logs? Roosevelt yes. logs. Yeah. Yes. The, 
listen, these don't happen to be related somehow to Hampton because, you know, there are these logs that are laying around possibly where, where maybe Hampton has been. Are, are these no, brown no, no, no. logs? These are big reddish logs with like little cutouts. Okay. Yeah. Just checking. Okay. Yeah. 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 Fake news. Fake news. Yeah. <laughs> Roosevelt Hampton. logs and Hampton pellets. That's the... There is a uh, um, Foxy uh, would know what it says on the cover of this this book on uh, uh, Billy's uh, nightstand. There is a book, and uh, Foxy, you can see that it says uh, "Easy Reader Level 8. Uh, and it's uh, it's uh, some some adventure. Uh, story, and then you see that it's got a plastic tag on, like a a plastic sticker on it that says, uh, um, "Like Carter Middle School, number sixty eight, on it." And clearly, this is like a library book. Perfect. And Hampton, you know that this is sort of the thing that you know we'll get. We'll get. Uh, Billy's I, I will attempt uh, while you're all fixing the 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 thing. I'm going to climb up and chew a book. Okay. So, Foxy, give me an education roll about knowing where eternal particles or eternity particles okay. are. And that's three dice, right? Yeah, because you're educated. Yeah. yeah. Right. A two, a one, and a four. Yeah, you've never heard tales. I mean, you've seen, like, you know, smaller particles, like the, the ones of the A rating and the double A. You know, like those particles, my flashlight, right? Exactly. But no one has ever seen yeah. such a massive, powerful thing as the eternity particle that was in the chest of um, Primo. So, um, Penguin, you are able to pull the the destroyed particle out and remove all the acid. Like you, you have like a little brush that you pull from your backpack and you brush out all the acid and clean it out. But without a new eternity particle you're not going to be able to bring primo back so if there's only one place we can get it then we have to go there well it is uh it is worth the i it is worth the journey to the basement uh and i I start just grabbing things to throw into my backpack that I will randomly pull out and describe at a future point in time. Yeah. And, uh, I, uh, I, uh, how, how late is it? Or is everybody going, do we have to be concerned about Camille catching us? Well, while you were all dealing with this, this did take a little while, especially with the chewing of the book. It's a very important, you know, specific process that Hampton has to go through. Um, you know, to leave the proper particles in the brow. Um, the lights in the hallway turned off and the house got quiet. So you're pretty sure that everyone is asleep now in the house. So if you need to journey through the house, then uh, that uh, you could do that now. Uh, also, before we go to the basement, uh, Pengi, I, I noticed that uh, some of your stuffing is showing. Uh, did those dust mites hurt you? I, I, a little bit, a little bit. Um, uh, and I, I look over at Winston and it's like, uh, could you squirt? And like, I try to, he squirts a little bit of water and I try to scrub it off, but it's not necessarily going away. Uh, I go, I could, I could fix it myself. Um, but it's not, it, it, it's our mission's more important right now. I, 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 are you all planning? I'm, I'm finishing arranging the particles in a very, particular set of piles to to because that's how you communicate um are you planning on going to the basement yeah you've to. been to the basement yeah it's it's nighttime it it is if it was day the gods would see us yes but at night the rat in the mice are out it's a rat hmm it's a rat. Um, it's like a really big mouse. It looks or a very like, angry version of Hampton. Right, right. Oh. With a longer, with tail. a long tail, with a very long, long tail, uh, bigger okay. teeth. I get it. That's uh, beady, beady that's little red eyes, and they stink. 
Not like me. Not like you. A different kind of stink. I smell like cedar. Cedar? I thought I heard her. <laughs> uh, bum. Anyway, I just I do not recommend going to the basement at night. Not only that, it's scary. But I am not I, afraid. I am not afraid. I can get down there myself in my hamster ball of doom. Getting back up is somewhat problematic. But you all do not have armor like I do, and you would be in trouble. Just saying. I have my shield and I have my sword. I take my cloak and I like majestically whip it around my back and tie it in the front. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair. Fair enough. Yep, yep, yep. Bert, Bert and I work well together. Yes, we do. All right. So is it decided you're all going to go to the basement? I, unless there's another place to go that anybody can think of. Let's, I, that's no. where Pingy is. Pingy knows that he can fix anything if he gets to the basement. Box is on the way to the basement. Stop at the box first. See if there's a one of these things okay. there. That's, maybe, that's a good idea. See the rat. Not that I'm afraid of the rat. I'm not afraid of the rat. No one said you were afraid of the rat. Okay. Good. I did. I think he said he was afraid of the rat. I believe I've not heard this before. Not afraid of the rat. As you just you 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 have this discussion as uh you uh go to Billy's door and fortunately it's not completely latched shut, which is a good thing because it would be hard. You have someone climb up there and get the latch and hold the door open. Everyone gets out and uh, whole a whole process. Uh, so you're able to push the door open and you begin walking down the hallway. I, I'll get um, into my uh, rollerball and roll. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you're rolling along amongst them amongst the the other nights and uh the whole house is dark and quiet and it's you know rainy so there's just kind of this like white noise of rain on the rooftop outside and the floor is uh you're walking along a hardwood floor with like a long hallway runner down the floor um which is actually kind of askew and it's got some like stains on it you know because toddlers and children and uh you uh are all uh You've just reached the front door, and there's the large box. And just past, uh, you're, you're, I should say you're in the foyer, the foyer. There's the front door up ahead. Um, there's like a window at the top of the front door, and you can see the lightning every once in a while uh, from far away flash through the room as it rains outside. And there's like a street light pouring, you know, with light coming through. Just to the left uh, is the doorway to the basement. And at the base of that is the large box and off to the right is a doorway to a garage um and you've just arrived at the box um and it's kind of a large box it's uh, definitely taller uh than any of you i uh, see so you're gonna have to climb up if you want to look in there um who's gonna climb up okay Pengi will all right so Pengi, um as boost. yeah totally um, you don't even have to roll. You just take your time. You boost up. You look down in the box, um, and the light illuminates uh, the box. It's mostly empty. Um, you see that there are some uh, Diplo uh, blocks that uh, Billy is trying to get rid of, and uh, it looked like Anna had chewed on them, so maybe Camille had like, thrown them in the box there. Um, there's several uh, chattering teeth. Uh, toys that they're just like like this and then there's a broken uh 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 sword light uh that they got uh, one time when they went to some like holiday uh parade thing and it was like one of those little cheap things that worked for a day and then broke uh so that's how, in the box right now. how big is the sword light like is it is it too big for like one of us to wield oh yeah it's too big for okay. it's 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 billy sized uh but it definitely has like, you know, it's got one of those uh, particles in it. So it might be the right size. Okay. Uh, I will uh, I will go and I, I will. Uh, the teeth are very easy to uh, see that they don't wait, have a particle. Wait, wait, yeah, wait, the teeth wait. are those wind-up type. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. We're not going to be able to boost you up. Take some rope. I have rope. Yeah, well, let's tie some rope to somebody. I will, since I'm in the box, I will take the rope and just hold on to one end of it and then throw the rest over the other side as you throw the rest over the other side 
a tiny chubby hand reaches out and grabs the string and pulls you up with it. And you are face to face with Anna, who is awake in the middle of the night. Uh, she has climbed out of her crib um, and she is in her diapers and a little like onesie. And she's like, ha! Ah! Um, and she's got one hand, like the fact that the, the other, the rest of you like did not hear this child. Like it, this is like a ninja toddler who was very silently cl- crawled down the carpet and like got there and was like, what's this? As this little string went flying up in her face and she holds you up and there you are hanging in the air, holding on to uh, the string that Anna's like, ha, you know, like googly noises at your face. So what do you all do? There is I a, immediately... a child like amongst you or right behind I immediately you. let go to fall back into the box. Okay. Where? I run over her foot and then okay. roll away. Okay, so she's like down on her knee, so her feet are out behind her, and you're going to roll over one of her feet. Whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to bump into her foot, her knee, something, so she sees me, and then I'm going to roll away to try and pull her away from the toys. Okay. All right. Uh, give me a, a roll for this. Give okay. me a 2d6 roll. Uh, two and a one. Okay, so you kind of bump into her, but she's so chubby, she doesn't even notice. And you kind of like roll back, ah, a little bit. Uh, so what is everyone else going to do? Can I run and jump off of Hampton's ball with my sword and stab this demigod in her diaper with my <laughs> oh, <no>. sword here? <laughs> sure, go ahead. We've got to <laughs> say thank you. Hampton yeah. is not going to sit still for that. Well, roll towards her and give me <laughs> a little... That's going to be a disadvantage because Hampton is not letting you jump up with him to kill a god <laughs> that he doesn't believe in. <laughs> oh, here, Hampton. All right. Uh, so move mm-hmm. and, and attack. Right. Yeah. Here we go. Whoops. Oh, well, that was a drop. Six. I'm sorry. I what wish I a six. Don't okay. Worry. I wish right. I could show you guys these rolls. I feel like it's getting suspicious, but <laughs> it's really good. happening. Uh, okay. You you leap off, and your your small plastic sword, toy sword, mm-hmm. like pokes her uh, right above the diaper, and uh, she goes from ah to, and her face turns to thunder and darkness. Uh, Foxy and Brickman, you're both there, like right there, and you're looking up at her face as it contorts from this like uh, you know god of yes. happiness to this just to a very angry angry god oh, baby yeah. yes um uh, what have you, you done do anything <laughs> right before because this baby is about to explode. yes i would like to i would like to i have um i gain advantage when trying to convince or influence someone okay so i'm gonna say uh no 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 sweet baby no no, no, it's okay. No, no, listen. I have cookies in the kitchen. Okay. Would you like a, a cookie? Give me a roll. Ah, a five. Okay. A five, All a four, right. and a one. Okay. Brickman, is there something you wanted to do? Um, this has gone very south, so I think I need to be the emergency. So I'm going to okay. invoke one of my extra forms, which okay. is a very in, ingenious design. It is a replacement leg for one of the uh, coffee table legs. And I'm just going to camouflage right in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you are now a coffee table leg right there. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Um, the, the, the small god child is just about to scream. Um, and it, it starts to, it goes, Aah! like that. Um, which is just piercing. But then it looks down and Foxy says about cookies and everything and go, Aye! and like leans down and like, yes, yes, a cookie. And then like noms on your head. Not like there's no teeth, right? So it's now you're just, your your head is wet. And it's like holding you. Um, and uh, no, you filthy beast. I mean, in the kitchen. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, this on far too long. Uh, for your uh, uh, to save any like face for this, mm. you're you're getting nommed. Um, <laughs> but uh, about 
maybe 30 seconds later, the hall uh, light, like there's a, you, you hear the door of the parents' bedroom open and the hall light switch, like switches on and the light, the hallway is lit with light. And uh, Camille looks her head out and goes, Anna? And then she sees Anna and goes, oh my God, child. It is far too, you should not, how did you get out of bed? Uh, and she's just kind of incoherent. She picks her up. She sees all the toys about uh, and she grabs, uh, she's like, this is not yours and pulls Foxy's wet head out of uh, Anna's mouth and then puts uh, you in the box, uh, takes uh, Bert and everyone and then sees Hampton's hamster ball. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to be mm -hmm. very clear. Grabs hamster, uh, the ball and puts it in the box. And then, uh, <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> uh, walks down to the hallway to the child's room, puts the child in there, the, turns off the hall light, closes the door, um, and you know that it's going to be a while before she comes out because she's going to have to put the put Anna back to sleep. Um, Winston, you're not going to do me any good in here. Um, um, and I pick Winston up and I throw him back out of the box. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Do we have about 15 more minutes before? We do. We have 15 okay. minutes so. until we're over with the session. So I'm going to say you make it out of the box. Um, you make it down the stairs. Um, I, I, will, I will exit the ball and chew a hole. Okay. That's fine. You can also uh, check in the, uh, the sword of light. Uh, yep. there, it, there are uh, particles, but they're, they're expired. They begin to, they're leaking a little bit of acid themselves. Oh, uh, gross. Yeah. Uh, I show them back in the sword and just leave it where it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you, uh, you're you able to open the door to the basement. Um, and the basement is creepy and dark. And, uh, uh, but there is a light on, like downstairs in the back. It's, you know, like a, 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 a like for the laundry area. There's this like light that stays on all night. It's like nightlight sort of thing. So you can see the stairs. And you all bounce down the unfinished stairs. Uh, and you can see the, the the like the internals of the walls and like the uh, what is that called the not the siding but the uh, insulation keep it, the insulation yes that's the word you see the insulation in the walls and you come downstairs and there's this like large like uh, folding table with folding chairs around it and then up against the wall there's a series of bookcases with a bunch of board games on there and at the base uh, between two of the bookcases there's a small hole in the wall. Um, and then over on the uh, left side, there is an area with uh, more, uh, what are they called? Uh, Linux. Linux. Yeah, there's a box of Linux, uh, which probably Camille's or maybe uh, Billy's dad, one of the two. Or, and that was their stuff, but Billy's like been playing with it. Um, and it was a box of like previous stuff that hadn't been opened. And Billy recently opened it and built this ball tower. Um, and then off uh farther even like kind of behind the stairs there's where the light is coming from uh there's the laundry area and there's a sewer grate over there uh like a drainage uh grate and there's you can smell the detergent and like the kind of like the mildewy smell of like you know this old washer and dryer and whatnot and also you hear the hum of the hot water heater um that's down here as well and like an air exchange and a heater exchange so there's like that whole sort of like mechanical hum going on right now uh so yes can i uh finish healing Engie? yeah if you want if Peggy's still lacking a hit point i'd like to take some of this pink stuffing out of the walls mm -hmm. and uh, i go to pangy and i'm like your, your stuffing's getting a little thin there pal so don't, let's fix don't, it. don't eat the pink stuffing Just don't Just don't I nom the pink stuffing. It's fine. <laughs> I it's fine. yeah, and I pull out a. Uh, I actually pull out a small sewing kit. I, <laughs> uh, and as you as you hand it to me, I will take it and aid you. Uh, in may I <laughs> <laughs> just like Putting stuffing? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and now I'm an overstuffed penguin. Uh, That's right. And you're very good. warm. You're very warm. <laughs> and a little itchy. <laughs> um, okay, I'm done. So I'm what done. do you see? Uh, 
so you see the Linux, uh, the Linux ball tower over there. So what are you uh, all going to do? Hampton does not believe in the powers of the Linux tower. Uh, so Hampton will instead uh, stand guard by the sewer grate to make sure the rat doesn't come out and beat on his buddies. Okay. All right. And I'll head straight towards the, after, after Bert has healed me, I, uh, I will head towards the tower. Just make a beeline straight for the tower. Okay, yeah. I um, will. Oh yes, go ahead. Yes. Turn into my ninja outfit and sneak over to the tower. Or if, if there's an electrical thing we got to turn on, I'll sneak over to that instead. There is, yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll sneak over to the to the switch. Um, just as you arrive at the switch, and you go to take your little hand out to like switch the switch. Yes, exactly. Um, you hear a chittery noise. Um, the Linux tower is mostly in shadow. And as you approach that, you can all feel the power of the dreamlands come over you. And the tower kind of transform into this magnificent glowing copper and brass contraption where you put a this like ball of energy in and it transforms stuff. And then whatever it is that you're trying to get comes out. And uh, you see uh, Hampton... You look over towards your friends and just you realize that you're not guarding the right spot because on top of the box where all the Linux pieces are is a tall, furry, toothy creature with a top hat. And uh, it says, who's touching my machine? And you see this rat and it's Richard the rat. It's kind of a jerk. Uh, uh, but he doesn't go by Richard. But he... Uh, he has a vest on with like stripes, pinstripes, a fancy vest with bright buttons and this like shabby top hat. And uh, and he's, uh, yeah, he's got his tail and he's kind of like swinging his tail around. Who's going there to touch my machine? And he kind of like standing there like staring down at all of you. Oh, and he's got a, he's got like a walking stick too. This, this machine for, should be for, uh, for anybody and we, we need to use it. He's Rick, he probably on hasn't noticed it, you because it belongs in a museum. Oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wrong genre. <laughs> <laughs> He's perched on the top of the Linux tower. Uh, uh, Richard the rat is on the box next to the Linux tower. Everyone oh. else is around the base of it. Brickman being in their uh, ninja outfit near the switch is in the shadow. So when, you know, I'm assuming when Richard the rat, uh, you know, spoke, you know, Brickman suddenly became one with the shadow. Shinobi. Okay. Um <laughs> I'm gonna I'm going to attack the bottom of the box. Ah, okay. With as much force as I can build up. Go ahead and give me a roll. Uh, and if if I happen to go past Bert, I might ask Bert to give me a hand. Sure. I still have two at the moment. That's right. Just smack the ball as I go past. All right. Does that, by any chance, give me any advantages? Of course. You can go ahead and roll 3d6 for this. Good. I will double my attacks. I have the ability of furious tenacity. Yes. Double the number of attacks I have, so I'll make two attacks on the box. Yep. And the first one, I roll a five and a six and a three. And the second one, I roll a three, a six, and a six. Fantastic. You slam into the box. The box side crumples under uh, the furious rage of the hamster. And the rat tumbles down amongst all of you. It's, oh, oh, oh. Of course. Uh, if you, you, if you really... Needed the box up uh, the the machine that badly, you should have just said something. I'm happy to trade. Happy to trade. I will I will take whatever. While I was scrummaging for stuff upstairs in my bottomless backpack, uh, I pull out some uh, food remnants and stuff that was uh, that was in Billy's room. Mm. That and so I I go oh trade okay and I start rummaging around. I find whatever food remnants I pull out and I just, I give him, give him some cookies or crackers. Uh, well, this is, this is very kind. He starts looking kind of like greedy. 
He's like, his lights light up and he's, this is very kind and would normally pay uh, for your ability to approach the machine. But since you're already here, I need some other form of payment for whatever it is you take from my glorious Linux machine. And he looks over at Hampton and says, the ball will do. Now, uh, he's obviously trying to be greedy and take more than uh, what has been offered to him. Uh, so if any of you want to try to convince him otherwise, oh. uh, that, you know, you could totally do that if you'd like. I point my space gun at him. Oh. <laughs> and say, the ball stays with us. He's like holding all the food. So go ahead and give me a, a, a persuasion check. Okay. I think you're Can charismatic, I... are you not? Turn on the machine as Foxy is saying this to make it yeah, totally. seem like total control of the situation. Yeah, totally. That's fantastic. <laughs> two, so, five, Foxy, eight, uh, you can roll. Well, okay, fantastic. Uh, yeah, so uh, he's like, okay, fine, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll take the food. Just one time, though. One time. And he like scurries off with the food. Um, and you uh, are able to turn the machine on. Uh, you take one of the, the red plastic balls. You put it into the machine. Of course, here, you know, in the this like shimmery area between, you know, the Billy's house and the Dreamland, the ball glows with this light, this inner light. Um, and you place it in the machine, and it does all this whirring and clanking, and steam comes out of it, and then it goes chunk, and this little like uh, metal door pops open. And out rolls uh, small little gumballs, and also a uh, eternity spark, rated E. <laughs> um, and your your journey back towards uh, the bedroom is uh, without problem. Uh, you make it back. You're able to put in uh, the eternity spark. I say spark. The eternity particle. Yeah. Hampton, uh, Hampton, we're able to use uh, rope and, you know, I actually grabbed a couple of the teeth out of the box and I pulled those out of my backpack and attach it to the ball. And so we're able to kind of thump you upstairs, back upstairs. You oh, put the little okay. teeth in, in the air holes. So temporarily, while you don't have more air, you can become like this treaded ball or something. Okay. As long we're as I we're running out of time, so I'm just trying to get us to like... As long as step. I get up the steps. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Uh, you make it back to the room, um, and you're able to put the Eternity Spark into uh, Primo, and uh, he, like, Eternity Particle, oh, oh, much thanks to you, Knights of Underbed. You have saved me once again from the dreaded Dust Mites. And uh, he uh, stands up and does a sound. And uh, lights glow and flash about. And uh, yeah, you have saved the day. The next morning, uh, the mom comes okay. in to uh, like look at the room and says, Billy, I, I really don't want to have to tell you about cleaning your room. And Billy sees the two book. And he says, oh, I'll handle it. I'll handle it. So he cleans the room up. He finds plenty of Roosevelt logs and other things that he doesn't use anymore. And he puts those in the box. And then the mob takes the box to the school and drops it off. And all of you plus Primo are safe uh, from the oh, point. Yeah. And I'm going to uh, end it there because we have about three minutes left before the end of the session. <laughs> if we had another two hours, I would have done so much more. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but that was fantastic. So uh, I hope everyone enjoyed the time. And uh, if you have any questions or comments or anything go ahead you can hit me and i know we're only going to stream for a couple more minutes uh so we can talk you know now and also if we, you need to talk after the stream that's fine too so do you have any comments questions suggestions or ideas or anything like that quick comment that was awesome ben that was fun for a long that was it. great enjoyed it's so much fun awesome. What age groups have you seen this or or how how have you used maybe this particular role playing game um with interventions um, I, uh, I'm not a therapist, but I, the designer, so I've play tested this, uh, with a bunch of different groups. I specifically, when I was play testing this, took this to a convention down in Tucson, Arizona, where they have a kid's track 
and they have an actually very healthy kids track. So there's lots of kids. And I ran this for uh, the youngest child I've ever run the game for was a three-year-old uh, who was just verbal. And uh, they basically played their, their stuffed toy that they had brought with them. And uh, their mom was there to help them along. Uh, but they, they had fun and they had a great time. We only played for like, I think 30 minutes with those kids because their attention span is very short. Uh, but I have played, I've run this for, from three-year-olds to adults. I've done a lot more with, you know, like six, seven, eight-year-old kids. They really love this game um, and they can really get it. The uh, book itself, like I talked about, and you've seen the rules, they're really short. Like this is like basically the, all the rules in the book. And I've actually gone a little bit farther because then there's like character creation. And then basically uh, there's some GM advice. And then I think it's like right about here. The rest of the book is all settings and expanded rules and ideas. So there's rules for uh, characters like uh, Brickman and uh, stuff uh, for like the transformer type stuff and like l living animals like dogs and cats and ferrets and weasels and hamsters. Um, and then there's all sorts of setting stuff. So there's like places, like there's like a whole description of underbed and like the, the goblin market, the night market that goes on there and just like different places in the dreamland and like monsters being playing like good monsters who have like monsters who have decided they're gonna go help kids now um, and all sorts of different things. And there's actual adventures in there too. Uh, so yeah, so it's, it's all, so you can play this. There's like stuff in here. There's content in here. That's like for kids of all different ages, but there's also like adult stuff. So you can get like really scary themes. Like some of the nightmares uh, are definitely not like younger kid friendly. Cause we have like La Llorona and the Banshee and Opa Noct. And uh, what else do we have in here? I'm trying to think of five nights with Freddy. Yeah, you could totally do that sort of thing. I mean, I think one of the creepiest monsters in here is the not your parents. Uh, oh, set of monsters. yeah, from hey, Carol, uh, Coraline. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so there's all, and Bloody Mary is in here. So here are some of the the different like creatures, you know. Opa Noct will, you know, has his bag that he carries over his shoulder and naughty children who are outside at night, he will throw them in his bag or snip off their heads, that sort of thing, you know. That's a little bit more, like not for the younger set. The younger set. Yes, go ahead. So, what was the build the setting thing we did? Is that a normal thing you suggest to engage kids, or is that just something you did for funsy with us? I uh, it, there's rules for it in the book, um, and it's they're a little bit like I tonight I uh, changed it up a little bit as far as like the the, the rules exactly that are in the book. But I've been using that sort of type thing for like to set up for like convention games and whatnot. And it does help a lot with uh, engaging kids. Like okay. it definitely brings them into the setting and story because it makes it theirs. That it helps sense. with adults too, because like, uh, same <laughs> seriously, issue. same issue. Like they're like, oh, well, what do we do now? And it's like, well, uh, you know, there's all these things you've created now. So let's do that stuff that you've created. Um, and it really helps with buy-in and like getting people into the story. And uh, just with a little bit of practice as a GM, you can make this work for yourself. Uh, John Wick came up with the, I, I, okay. So John Wick made a new, like a sort of refined version of it. He called the uh, original, years ago called the Dirty Dungeon. And I say refined because, uh, now, uh, now I've forgotten his name. Uh, the guy who created a Pendragon role-playing game he came up with the original idea of having like players create stuff for his stories. And oh my gosh, what is his name? Uh, uh, Greg Stafford. There's literally a rule in the gaming industry called Stafford's Law, which is if you think you've come up with a new concept or game rule for a role-playing game, you didn't. Greg Stafford came up with it in the 70s or 80s while he was very high. And uh, it's, it's a fantastic rule, whatever it was, right? So that's, I mean, it's, it's very serious. Like Greg Stafford came up with all sorts of groundbreaking stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so that was like the dirty dungeon idea. And that's something that like, I, I like refined and put into World of Dew, which was my very first role playing game I did. And then I know that like uh, the Dresden Files role playing game took something like that and they put that in their thing. And then, you know, Knights of the Underbed has to, and there's a couple of other games I think that have this sort of like buy-in type thing too. Yeah, Kids yeah. on Bikes is very much like that, yeah. uh, where we yeah. have to design, you, you know, the setting and the rumors and all various things like that. Yeah, yeah, and they're 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 awesome. I actually, I'm in part of like a writing group, 
like a large writing group of people that yeah the, with those guys and they're fantastic kids on bikes is a fantastic game and there's tons of hacks for it too so if you want like kids on broomsticks or you know kids in spaceships or kids in mecca you know types like and some of it's unofficial content but you know there's all sorts of fun stuff that you can do with kids on bikes as well so yeah i'm a big fan of their stuff so yeah I, are we still streaming awesome yeah okay <clears throat> I never opened up the streaming thing. I was too busy doing other stuff. So, um, no, thank you so much, Ben. Greatly appreciated. It was a blast. Yeah, Ben. Good stuff. Thanks, everyone. We're going to move Appreciate the stream you. over to another channel to do a raid. So, just hold on one quick second. We'll do that. Sure. No problem. Thanks. <laughs> I, I appreciate Good raiding, guys. Your system is, is extremely easy to use, easy to teach, and your character sheets are half a page. So, that's. Yeah. A, all, all good selling points when dealing. You can with actually use uh, three by five cards.